What I'd like to cover in these sequence of videos is simple energy calculations for estimating the annual energy use of buildings. And we're going to be going through the degree day methods in all its flavors, the modified degree day and also the variable base degree day method. Those we'll get to in a later video. So these methods have been around for quite some time, for several decades, and it really begins with the utilities. So long ago, the utilities, I can bring my mouse over here, they, they began by plotting, oh, oh goodness, that's a little better. They would plot their daily energy sales versus the average daily temperature. And we'll say this energy, they were, they were talking perhaps BTUs over the course of a day. And what they found is that they got something that looked like this when they plotted this out. So, for instance, January 1st, during the day, it, we had an average outdoor air temperature of minus 10 degrees, and they used 100,000 BTUs, and they would plot that, and they would get a shape like this. So, obviously, they noticed, okay, well, this is constant, and so we can, we can know that, and we also can now basically run a straight line through this, and we know that that additional that additional energy we'll we'll say that this here we'll call this just eh for now that's proportional to the difference of of some parameter well that that difference they found this to be almost they found this to be typically around 65 degrees Fahrenheit in a variety of their cases. And so if we want to know what the difference is, I guess this x, any at any point, that's going to be 65 minus your temperature. So if you were here, and we'll say this is 35, this distance is 65 minus 35, and that height goes up by a factor of k. And we'll say that this is positive. So if we put this out, we would say that this additional energy is related to this equation. but And this was only valid from t is greater than negative infinity up until that point. After that, it was some sort of constant. So what they needed is they also didn't want this to keep... If you, if you model this, if we go on forever, eventually this would go negative if you put in this equation. If any... Essentially, this value here goes negative if t is greater than 65. So they needed some mathematical nomenclature to, to make this go to zero when t is greater than 65. And what they chose is to put a little plus subscript up here. So if this value inside the parentheses is positive, you just got back whatever positive value you had. If it was negative, you go straight to zero. This is also known some circles as the ramp function. So that's all good. And if you wanted the annual energy use, you just essentially sum up all these EHs from the first day to the 365 if day. So this is great. This was used for a utility. So this was many homes. But the thought really occurred that this, this concept could be applied to an individual home and figure out what would be the annual heating requirement for an individual home. And for that, we're actually going to dive into a little bit of calculus that really defines what the degree day is all about. So let's do a little thermo, a little calculus. So if you haven't taken thermo or know nothing of physics, you might want to go refresh yourself with that. So let's imagine, we'll simplify, this box is my building. And 
from a thermal perspective, we're going to define a control volume to be the surface of this building. And we know energy is conserved across this. And we are just going to say that this building experiences some heat gain or heat loss that must be made up by the system. So we're going to assume that we are losing heat from the building to the environment. So it's cold outside. And how much heat is lost through the building, through the building surface? We're going to call that QH. So this is this is heat loss and this would be a unit of energy per time or BTU per hour. Well, it's that rate of heat loss is going to be related to one, the size of your building. So how much surface area of hit you have. If you have more surface area, you're going to have more heat loss. It's also going to depend on what materials that wall is made out of. Is it made out of we have a lot of insulation, is it made out of concrete, is it made out of wood? This U value takes all of that into account. And then lastly, we need to know, well, the rate at which it leaves is going to be related to how cold it is outside. And we're going to assume that we aren't going to need any heating unless it's less than 65 degrees. So if it's less than 65 degrees, it's this temperature difference that this is going to go up by a factor of. And so this is the, the final equation. So U, let's just do a quick unit check. This is BTU per hour per foot squared per degree F. A is uh, foot squared. And this here is this total subtraction. Subtract like things has degrees Fahrenheit. So cancel, cancels, cancels, cancels. You'll have a BTU per hour, and that's what we have on this side. Now, with that said, that's heat loss at any moment. Hopefully you can see where we're going with this. What we want really is capital Q. We want annual heating requirements. Ooh, rough, rough penmanship. And that's going to be in BTUs. So let's let's plot plot this list out versus time over the entire year. Because really what we're going to do is integrate that versus time over the whole year. So to make things maybe a little clearer, if let's say the temperature was the same throughout the whole year, it was 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, if you wanted the total heating requirement, it would be pretty simple. This is a constant. This is a constant. We would have a difference of 30. You would take UA times 30. You would get something in BTU per hour, and you would multiply that by the number of hours in the year, 8,760 hours. And you would get some total. But now this T varies with time. So this really, this T, this T is a function of time. And instead of just multiplying it by the amount of time in the whole year, a, a, I guess a delta T, we are going to do an integration. We're going to sum up all the little DTs. I should write this, t is a function of time. So I hope you notice that. So at any moment, we have this level of heat transfer going out. If we multiply it by some small difference in time, and we do this from 0 to t, from the first of the year to the last of the year, we'll get the total energy requirement. So let me actually draw this. Let's say the y-axis here is ua65 minus t, and this axis is time. And this goes up something like this, and we know we'll actually, we'll put a plus here. We're going to say, if it's above 65, we don't need any heat. So this actually never goes below the zero line here. And we go up like this. 
the total energy is really the area under this curve. That's the total energy. If this was constant, that's why you could just take that value, multiply it by t. If this doesn't make sense to you, I suggest you go back to your calculus. Now, this is where the concept of a degree A comes in. This is this function may be all squiggly. This this really has no mathematical shape to it, and so to integrate this with an analytical solution really is impossible. So what we do is we approximate it, and we approximate it with the rectangle method. So if you wanted to approximate the area, you could take the average value for a section, make that the height, and multiply it by its width, delta t. And so here's where the concept of a degree day comes in, because this is this width, this height, the width is a unit of time, and the height is really a unit of degree f, if we took out this ua and we put that on the other side of the equation. So we're just let, we're really looking at this parameter here. This is what's changing. Now to make it a degree day, all it's saying is that, okay, this is, let's say this is Jan 1st at midnight, and I'm going to make this bigger than what it, would, it really would be, but let's say this is, this is Jan 2nd midnight. So this is one day difference. Well, we can approximate that area by taking the average temperature of that day. Average temperature degree, we'll say that's 30 degrees F, and multiply it by a difference of one day. Degree day. 30 times 1. 30 degree days. It really should be degree F days would be a better nomenclature. And so then we take this temperature data throughout the whole year. We take the average daily temperature and we multiply it by one day and we sum them up. And that gives you a total, total degree days. And so really degree days They are this portion. They are this, they are really this integral. This is a degree and this is a day, dt, time. And so this really ends up being degree days. So you can therefore go ahead, annual heating consumption, U, A, degree days for the year. And that's really what it's all about. Now there are quite a bit of assumptions and things you need to realize that aren't accounted for this very simple box model. There's no solar, there's no dynamics, but this was this is a simple way to get annual heating requirements. We've also just assumed the 65. Is that the best number to assume? Well, we'll look at that in a future video. See you next time.